Hello, my name is Catherine Mason. I'm the chair of the board. And welcome to our first and maybe only uh, virtual annual general meeting. Um, hopefully, many of you have enjoyed the uh, rather inspiring uh, Academy of Research and Improvement uh, conference. I'm led to believe that uh, we maxed out at something over 400 people, which was really rather good. And that we had somewhere between 60 and 70 service users uh, and um, their families with us. So I'm really pleased about that. Uh, so well done to Sarah Williams and I know a very extensive team behind her who uh, put on everything today. Um, as this is our first uh, virtual AGM, please do bear with us if there are any technical glitches. But section here will be more about user error, I'm sure, rather than technology. Uh, and there may be a lag between what you see and what you hear. Um, in, in line with our infection uh, prevention guidelines, we're all going to be wearing masks. I know that that will make it very difficult for people with hearing impairments, but we will try and speak slowly and clearly. And the whole of this event is going to be recorded and then it will be uploaded onto YouTube with subtitles and so that you can play it back. And so, and first of all, I need to start by saying thank you. Thank you to all of our staff, all of those who have helped us out over the last six months through the um, pandemic. Uh, our staff have continued to show a huge amount of commitment, dedication and real flexibility to ensure we can continue to provide safe care. Your support, uh, anybody who is out there who has given support to the NHS and to key, key workers has helped tremendously, not only in the actual support, but the very thought that people are supporting us. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, the AGM today should help us to have a look at some of the achievements and challenges over the last year. And at the end, there will be the opportunity to ask questions. Now, you don't actually have to wait until the end, and I'll tell you how to ask questions in a little while. Um, so basically, um, we are going to be doing it all online today, and we'll see how it goes. So let us look now at the agenda. First of all, uh, we will have uh, Sue, who gives us a review of the year. Some of that in person and some of that by means of uh, video. Um, and then we will be having a little look at the year ahead. And of course, we actually have to do some of the formalities that are required of an AGM. So just to tell you that there are a copy uh, of the minutes of the last AGM, which was held last year on the 16th of September 2019. And they're on our public website, together with our annual report and accounts which is a snazzy looking document, although quite long, uh, and includes our quality account. Uh, and you should be able to see the link on the screen now, but that more of that in terms of the uh, publications at the end. Now, this is a bit that I have to explain, but frankly, I'm not very good at myself. So bear with me. So I'll explain to you about our virtual platform <coughs> that we're going to be using this afternoon. So uh, you should see slides, Main part of your screen with the live stream of us at the side of your screen. Now, if you're on a phone or tablet, you should see a small button at the top right with circular arrows. Apparently, if you click this button, it will switch between the slides and the live stream. Uh, to ask questions, uh, you click on the Q&A tab and then click on the plus sign to ask your question. Type in your questions as you think of them, so don't worry about waiting until the end. Um, in terms of uh, the slides themselves, those will all be downloaded, uh, can be downloaded using the download tab, uh, but they will be emailed to you directly afterwards as well. So before I hand over to Sue, just to sort of reflect on a couple of things uh, over the last few months. And we have to remember the last few months weren't the whole of our last year. We had an absolutely incredible achievement uh, last year in terms of being a great place to work, uh, uh, great care, and also great value for money. And we'll see how we achieved all of our targets uh, as we go through. 
but I would like to again thank our staff who have been amazing during this crisis and um, we have been joined right across the trust in terms of pulling together and also I think what has been particularly profound during uh, the crisis has been the work that has gone on between trusts between us and other partners in our systems. I think it has helped us all to get to know each other better and to work much more closely together. Uh, they are completely unprecedented times, but actually I think it's galvanized a huge amount of action. Thank you very much to staff who were redeployed, some of them inside the trust, but I've even heard uh, stories of people being redeployed outside of the trust. Uh, and so that is a, a very generous way in which we have um, all achieved our objectives together. So thank you for those who uh, are working and continue to work in different ways to deliver our services. I'd also like to say a special thank you to our volunteers, our student nurses, and those who have come back to work with us in the NHS. Now there was a national call out, but this part of the world actually succeeded ahead of uh, many of the other areas in terms of getting uh, former employees and students to work in this area. So thank you very much for students who've uh, taken extended placements. So we have had also um, donations from uh, the NHS charities together. So thank you very much for that as well. We're going to be using that to help um, in terms of staff wellbeing. Um, and it's not only the donations, but the sentiment, which is really, really appreciated. So thank you to anybody who uh, generously donated. That certainly has made a difference for both our staff and our patients. So next I will hand over to Sue. But in terms of uh, what comes next after that, we will have Andrew Sprevens, who is our Chief Finance Officer. And he will uh, give us a quick summary on how the numbers worked out for 2019-20. So first of all, let me hand over to Sue. Many thanks, Catherine. And um, uh, hello to everybody through the, the virtual media tonight. Um, I am Sue Harriman. I am the incredibly proud chief exec of uh, Soda NHS. And I think... Um, uh, I was reflecting at the beginning of the research conference this morning um, that it's a very different experience to be stood talking to all of you through a camera, particularly when I think about the previous age events we've had, where the room has been full of people who have interacted, uh, who have asked amazing questions, and who have helped to work with us and contributed to uh, all the success of the learning of our organisation. So this is a very different let me tell you a little bit about Solon, um, and I know many of you who will have connected know us really, really well. But um, the organisation came into existence in April 2011, so we're still a very young organisation. We provide community, mental health, learning disability, and a raft of other specialist services, like sexual health and dental services, across uh, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Um, we turn over at over £200 million a year and um, we continue to grow and that means our workforce continues to grow. We have over 5,000 people who work within our organisation and that's not even counting all of the amazing volunteers that work alongside us. Every year um, we touch the lives of many people and last year we touched the lives of over 1.1 million people through our country. We're really proud of the work that we do, not just not within our organisation, but across and with our partners. So that's Solon. So it always feels weird thinking about last year because we're so very much into this year and all that this year brings. And our review of the year this year is different. We're going to do that through a video because, let's be honest, there is no better way than to think about what we achieved and our successes and what we learned and through um, the eyes and the voices um, of those who provided services to and our staff.
As an award-winning community, mental health and learning disability trust, we pride ourselves on providing great care, rated as outstanding by the CQC, being a great place to work and delivering value for money services. I'd like to share a few examples of how we've delivered against our priorities in 2019 to 2020. We strive to always deliver care that is personalised, based on patients' needs and priorities, designed by people in our communities and delivered with respect and kindness. We always try to provide quality care that is safe, evidence-based and responsive. We work closely with our partners to help reach even more people and care for them through even more stages of their lives. We wouldn't live without Sona and NHS and they've helped her to get where she is now. So if it wasn't for them, we would be stuck basically and she'd be still suffering without diagnosis of things. They've just given us so many pointers and so much help and he's come a long way and he's gonna need speech language therapy for it sounds like the next couple of years. So. I'm really glad that the service is here, so thank you. They're yeah, the care, they? they looked after me very well, aren't they? The care's been great, they? they all have. In 2019 20, we delivered more than 1.1 million service user contacts. Building Blocks is our new service that we're offering here with, jointly with Solent. Um, it's an early help intervention for families. We've been able to do joint training, share resources, have cross-learning. We've had our NSPCC colleagues co-located with us to really enhance that kind of relationship building. We met with a family that had been identified by the health visitor who had uh, recently had a, a baby. A uh, baby was about 10 weeks old and mum had um, been struggling. And she had a little toddler as well and the baby wasn't sleeping. I think she was really worried that she couldn't meet her child's emotional needs and also developmental needs. And what was fantastic was that the health visitor and Jane, the NSPCC worker, were together on this contact and we could actually talk about building blocks, promote what that um, offer would look like and how we could actually help and support them, which is absolutely fantastic. And baby soon started to settle. Uh, we went through the developmental ages and stages with the toddler so that mum could see that she was doing a good job and had met those goals that she needed to do. I met Nabil about a year ago. Um, he was a young man that had sustained a spinal injury, a low spinal injury, and he had also sustained an amputation. Due to the complexity of this man, nobody wants to accept him. The mental health and the physical health issues are so complicated. We started some teaching sessions um, to explain what the injury had done to his bladder and bowel and how that would be managed. The staff started to do his care, his physical care, and I oversaw that. And then he started to do some of his care and I oversaw saw that as well. Today, a year later, he's a young man that will tell you when his catheter is due a change, will be able to do his own bladder washout, able to check his own skin, and has the hope that actually he will return to university and be able to look after himself fairly well. And when you have schizophrenia, with the right help, with the right support, they can make it and make it a big time. So we are very, very proud of Nabil and yeah, he's part of the team at the moment. Yeah. We are consciously committed to our communities and have a desire to authentically engage with the people we serve, planning, designing and delivering services based on what really matters most to local people. During the year, we've continued to work in partnership with people in our communities, groups and organisations to help us achieve our ambition of developing local services for local people. I've supported Solon in making a difference to encourage people to improve the quality of their health and living independent lives, uh, paying particular attention to obesity, uh, alcohol and drug addiction. Or the other speciality that I have is that because I'm a veteran, I pay attention to veteran issues. And I would like to feel that I'm paying something back. Uh, that's one of my skills, I can communicate. I have knowledge, I have networks and things like that. 
the final months of the year were dominated by a planning and management of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are extremely grateful to our teams who have shown overwhelming dedication and commitment in helping us respond to the crisis. Our teams had to think quickly and innovatively to adapt the way in which we work to ensure that people could continue to receive care during completely unprecedented times. Well, I remember thinking back to that time, the huge anxiety all of us felt. Um, we obviously had all our patients on our books, um, the referrals were still coming in, and it was just really a very steep learning curve of how on earth are we going to support all these patients without being able to see them face to face. It looked like an impossible task, but as we worked through it methodically as a team, we all worked extremely hard at that time. Everybody was working flat out to just kind of think outside the box of how we can, could continue our service. What we wanted to do is provide that personal touch as well with our patients. So normally in normal times, they would come to us and we do the face-to-face -face exercise sessions. And we wanted them to have that as well at home and not just feel that we were giving them a program that didn't have that personal touch. Um, so what our exercise professional did was um, she's actually filmed um, the exercises that we would normally do and she did it in her own home um, and she did different stages of the video so that we could tailor it to each patient as well and give them the appropriate level of exercise to do. And we've had lots of patients say how grateful they've been that we've been there at a very sort of scary time for people, not only because of COVID but because they had their own cardiac event that's just happened and that's scary in itself. We know that there is a clear connection between patient and employee satisfaction. Great care is delivered when people feel connected, involved and supported. Our priority of making Solon a great place to work is underpinned by strong values-based culture, supported by strong leadership throughout the organisation. We nurture growth, ensuring that everyone in Solon benefits from learning and career development Solent is truly a great place to work. In the National NHS Staff Survey for 2019, employees rated us as an organisation that provides great care and makes a positive difference to patients. The Trust scored among the best nationally when compared with other combined community, mental health and learning disability trusts for the second year in a row and ranked eighth in the country by listening into action when compared with all trusts. I think Solent is a great place to work because it offers opportunities to be so innovative in terms of the care that you can deliver. I feel valued. Um, I feel like my feedback and my opinions are taken on board. They've got lots of resources. There's lots of information available to staff, particularly during the COVID pandemic. They have provided a lot of extra support to staff. I feel that I can, like I said, bring my whole self to work. Um, and that I won't be judged if I'm having an off day, I can just share that. We've had to respond very quickly during this pandemic and Solent has been very supportive of that. It hasn't put any barriers in the way for the changes that we wanted to make for our programme. It doesn't necessarily feel like a place to work, it feels more like a giant family. During the year, a lot of hard work has continued, ensuring that her colleagues have the confidence and freedom to speak up can raise concerns and know that they will be listened to and that we will act. In October, we received a national accolade from the National Guardian's Office for our positive speaking up culture. We were crowned the best performing combined mental health, learning disability and community trust in the country following our annual NHS staff survey results, where staff said they felt comfortable raising concerns. We were also the second highest Freedom to Speak Up index score in the country. Team working is at our heart. Delivering great care is underpinned when people feel connected, involved and supported to do their very best work together and that their work is recognised and celebrated. During the year, we held a number of celebration events in honour of our staff of more than over 5,000 people. We increased the number of Schwartz rounds we held across the Trust. These give people the chance to share and reflect on their experiences. We've empowered and supported people to celebrate the difference they make. In 2019, we held a celebration of Nurses' Day in May. 
June saw our inaugural Solent Awards, a celebration of the incredible work from staff across the Trust that year. The Allied Health Profession Conference followed in October. We also held our